This session demonstrates assembly of the non-metallic control circuit enclosure box. Uh, the unit has a fiberglass backplane board that we'll use to assemble the Curtis Albright contactors. We'll begin with the backplane contactor assembly. The backplane board's been pre-drilled in three locations. Uh, the contactors are assembled to the board with quarter 20 screws and nuts. Once the contactors are positioned and the bolts are tightened, this assembly will be complete for the time being. It can be set aside for installation later into the box. We'll begin assembling components in the box with the control circuit fuse block holder. This unit attaches at two pre-drilled locations. Once assembled and tightened, the next component to be installed will be the Curtis PB6 pop box. The Curtis pop box assembles on the end of the enclosure on four pre-drilled locations. They'll be assembled and tightened with the supplied screws and nuts. The KLK20 fuse holder and fuse mounts with a single bolt in a pre-drilled location on the side of the box on the hinge side of the box and once it's installed and tightened we'll install the KLK20 fuse into the holder. The 12 volt control circuit terminal strips install on the pre-mounted angles in a pre-drilled uh, hole locations. Once these units are assembled and tightened we're ready to install the backplane with the previously installed Curtis contactors. The backplane board installs on four threaded screw locations provided in the bottom of the box. Once this unit's assembled and tightened, that wraps up our pre-assembly of the control circuit enclosure. To review, we installed a Curtis PB6 pot box on the end of the enclosure, two Curtis SW200 main contactors, two 12 volt control circuit terminal strips, and the 12, the high voltage KLK20 fuse block and holder. This concludes our session on assembling the control circuit enclosure box.